the word too in the title may suggest that I will focus on a piece of official state propaganda that uses this Cossack film as a, as a tool to mobilize society. Uh, however, as you will see, I will present a largely spontaneous phenomenon that then is described as a new actualization of the Cossack myth. And I will focus on the visual sphere, contemporary visual sphere of this myth. Uh, to outline the context, uh, the protest against the authorities that began in November 2013 in Kiev quickly became referred to as modern Cossack siege or kind of Zaporozhian siege. Firstly, this reflected the form of protest, highlighting the role of self-organizations as well as the phenomenon of direct democracy. In an interview from December 2013, Tsaras Chukhlip notes that in today's Euromaidan a kind of modern uh, mini-siege was built. In this sense, mini-siege means both the territory of Ukrainian spirit and space of freedom. Also, a well known Ukrainian writer, Andriy Kurkov, described, oh, oh mm -hmm. <laughs> described siege uh, as a form of order genetically embedded, embedded in Ukrainians. So, <laughs> so, when Ukrainians are dissatisfied with something, they rebuild this siege to protect their own dignity and interests. Uh, Cossack siege is kind of archetype of uh, Ukrainian political culture in which the nation not only chooses but also controls the power. And it was used to legitimize the Maidan protest. It was emphasized that Maidan, uh, the opposition doesn't control the Maidan, so the Maidan is the real siege, the voice of Ukrainians, the voice of nation, uh, and uh, the nation have the right to overthrow the power that doesn't respect them and doesn't uh, and harms them. Secondly, Maidan was Cossack because many of its participants directly referred to Cossack military traditions and uh, Cossack identity. Maidan self-defense units were divided into Sotnias headed by a Sotnik, as you know. Uh, the fourth Sotnia was called the Kozak Sotnia and uh, it brought together Kozaks from various organizations from the whole country. Uh, here you see the logo of, of the fourth Sotnia and here the logo of third Sotnia, which also referred to Kozak traditions. On the picture you can see the Kozaki Redut uh, and the task of fourth Sotnia was to defend this barricade on Hrestatic Street. Invoking the Ukrainian identity at the Maidan also took the form of a traditional or stereotypical uh, Cossack appearance with the ossiwedded troop uh, and, and the moustache. <laughs> but we discussed it uh, yesterday, is it a reconstruction or isn't, uh, is it a performing identity? I was told by one of the members of Cossack Sotnia that they were allowed to, to get this troop only after the first struggle with Berkut. So they needed to prove that they were brave again to call themselves uh, Cossacks. So, uh, 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 so they were contemporary real Cossacks, we can, uh, we can say. Uh, but sometimes uh, it took the form of, we can say, Cossack Baroque, uh, as you can see in these pictures. Another example in the Maida kitchen, there was a cook who prepared a soup according to traditional receipts from the times of uh, Khmelnytsky uprising, as he, as he stated. References to Cossack traditions and Cossack heritage also accompanied the participants of the anti-terrorist operation in Donbass. Here you can see several uh, symbols of military units uh, on which you can see Cossack, he, uh, he appears, uh, this figure appears very, very often. The Cossack also became one of the most popular representations accompanying first the revolution of dignity and the war in Donbass. And I will focus on the content of these representations, trying to answer the question why is Cossack such an attractive model for Ukrainians and how can these representations facilitate the integration and mobilization of Ukrainian society. First, it is worth mentioning that during the Ukrainian revolution and war, art played an important role 
in mobilizing uh, uh, protests and then struggle. In the picture on the right, you can see the Mesteski Bakbakan, the art barricade created in December 2013 by uh, artists associated with the Kiev Art Gallery and Club Mesteski Bakbakan. It was a place where revolutionary art were presented, the posters, revolutionary posters, but also various performances took place then and also a lot of cocktails were made there, also by artists. On the left you can see Mr. Skibar Vakan in Kiev on Tuhanif Island in summer 2015 and in consistent mainly uh, of war agitation poster. Uh, poster is the traditional form of political agitation. It's simple in the in form and with clearly legible, legible message. And now in Ukraine we can see posters, this kind of war posters and uh, agitation posters in, in city spaces and there are also special exhibitions uh, dedicated to patriotic posters. Here you can see two examples, exhibition of paintings and posters. Uh, the author is Yuri Neoslik, he was a participant in anti-terrorist operation and here was the final exhibition of Ukrainian patriotic poster competition when hundreds of best posters were presented. The, many of them were made by famous Ukrainian artists. However, this is the 21st century and the, 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 the greatest circulation of posters and graphics are not physical spaces, but of course the internet. Artists put posters on their own uh, social media profiles and they are shared by other users. Uh, among the first to appear uh, on the art barricade were the controversial works of Ivan Semesiuk and Andriy Yermolenko, which we call the figure of Nestor Machno, we, we discussed yesterday. Many artists of Mistelski Barbakan were associated with this union of free artists, which used the slogan of Machno Anarchist, Liberty or Death, and the flag of Machno Anarchist. And here you can see the portrait of Nestor Machno, painted by Ivan Semesiu. It was considered highly controversial because of the slogan, and it was removed from the exhibition in 2011 in Mestetsky Arsenal in Kiev. However, two years later, it was publicly displayed uh, at the city center of, of, of Kiev. Also, so, Kozak, first, Kozak is the symbol of the struggle for freedom, freedom in this uh, anarchic uh, dimension. Also to this anarchic dimension of Kozaks, uh, also Adiria Molenko referred to this anarchist dimension of, of, of Kozaks. Here we can see posters from his anarchist series and it, they also gained great popularity on this art barricade. During the art action at the Maidan, the artist emphasized the need for personal freedom, the freedom of artistic expression, as well as collective freedom, understood as a right to, of society to self-determination. And uh, it was perfectly reflected by the anarchist Kozak, symbolized by the Stormark. Here is another Yemolenko poster from 2012, which gained great popularity at the Maidan and uh, in 2014 it appeared uh, with, the new, with the new slogan and here this uh, mobilization message is really clear to, to mobilize people to join the struggle against those, those who want to take this Cossack freedom away. However, in the posters created before the Revolution of Dignity, this patriotic and national content is not on the foreground. Uh, however, it appeared really quickly, uh, becoming a clear and Cossack become, be, became a clear symbol of Ukrainianness. Here you can see, you, you, I'm sure you know this, this picture of Cossack Mama. Uh, it's one of the most common characters in Ukrainian folk paintings. Uh, he's a symbol of Ukrainianness, a symbol uh, archetype of Ukrainian people, <coughs> brave, belligerent, but also full of aesthetic needs. Uh, he's playing Pandora, and during the war in Donbas, Mama image was updated, and we can see him with the automat Kalashnikova. Uh, so the spirit remains uh, the same, and the Mama still inspires Ukrainians to fight, uh, to fight uh, because these Ukrainianness are in danger. Here is the very famous uh, poster by Andriy Yermolenko and the mural in Lviv 
with the same representation and instead of a horse, an armored vehicle and instead of a saber, aftermath. But not only uh, Kozak Mama was recalled from history to remind Ukrainians about the strength of their spirit. Uh, in the picture, here in the picture you can see a famous graffiti made in Grushevskiego Street in January 2014 when the violent clashes began. Here we can see the Taras Shevchenko as Ukrainka and Ivan Franko as revolutionaries, but uh, also with the Ukrainian national symbols. And especially Taras Shevchenko, a national poet and an advocate of Cossacks and national liberation struggle, became a popular figure. Here we can see militarized Shevchenko as an ATO member, as an ATO participant in the poster of Andy Yegmolenko. Often such representations are accompanied by fragments of poetry. Here is a fragment of the poem Caucasus, which gained great popularity during uh, your Maidan. It was read by Serkin Nikoyan, one of the heroes of the Heavenly Hundred. Another example with the paraphrase, non-polite paraphrase, so I didn't translate it, uh, of the poem My Testament. And on the left, uh, one of the pictures from the series is the whole series of Shevchenko in Donbass, painted by Yogi Shapova. So, uh, Kozak is uh, certainly the symbol of the Ukrainian patriot. He is the personification of Ukrainian values and Ukrainian identity. Uh, very often, often we can see uh, references to the state symbols like coat of arm and, and blue and yellow flag, so we can see glory to the uh, nation. And during the war, society needs, uh, needs to have clear, non-controversial values uh, to, to, to unite around it. And Cossack uh, can serve as that kind of symbol, simple symbol. Of course, not of you Ukrainian historians <laughs> dealing with it, but, but it, it, it could be quite simple uh, symbol. Cossack also symbolized the dangerous warrior who breeds hope and faith in victory <coughs> over the enemy. On posters from the time of war, uh, the Cossack is not only a symbol of the fight for freedom, this anarchist freedom, but also freedom of the homeland, which must be defended against invaders. This is a reference to the belief that for centuries Cossack have defended Ukrainian lands as Ukrainian patriot. Uh, here we can also see the references to the colors of Ukrainian nationalists, uh, black and red, and this, this slogan with this more radical version. Uh, the Cossack as a defender of Ukrainian lands appears on many posters. Here you can see some examples. Uh, so we defend Ukraine and the coat of arms. This is our land, uh, united, uh, so united in the spiritual sense. United Ukraine. In some posters, uh, Cossack is depicted as a symbol of the fight against very specific enemy, against Russia. Uh, we know that uh, Cossacks fought not only with Russia, but in the context of the war in Donbass, uh, this enemy, this one enemy, uh, really matters. In the graphic here, Russia is uh, symbolized by a bear. Here we can see uh, Cossacks who is defending the Putin's propaganda, which makes people zombies. And the message is really clear, thanks to the phenomenon of free Cossack spirit, which raised Ukrainians to fight. It is possible to resist the Russia's power and, and this ideological propaganda of the Russian world. Uh, here is the quite controversial uh, representation. Also, the Cossack is defeating the Russian bear. And here in the slogan we we see a freed some something <coughs> like that Ukrainians are ready to defend national values at any cost. Here is another interesting poster by Andriy Yegmolenko. So we see Cossack who kills a two-headed dragon symbolizing Russia. And as an artist admits, this is, the poster was inspired by a monument that was erected in 2015 in front of the building of the Kiev SBU. It's, it's really small, so you can pass and, and don't, don't notice it, but it's really interesting. Uh, we can see Kozak in a post referring to the icon of St. George. Uh, 
kills a two-headed dragon that has invited Ukrainian lands and holds its paws and tails on Donbass and Crimea. The monument is dedicated to the defenders of the, of the independence of Ukraine, to the ATO members. And as Yermolenko stated, commenting this word and commenting the slogan, uh, the entire Ukrainian nation is descendants of brave and fearless people, the Cossacks who since the times of Pyrian Rus have defended Ukrainian lands against the external enemy, and they have always been successful. So as a fearless conqueror, Cossack plays a mobilizing role, inspiring people to fight against invaders. This fight is presented as a continuation of the national liberation struggle that has been ongoing for hundreds of years. In this poem of famous contemporary Ukrainian poet Lina Kostienko, we can read that we fought and our ancestors fought, but now we need to do it again because once again the homeland calls, once again, like Cossacks before, contemporary Ukrainians must protect their land. So the form changes, but the spirit remains the same, as we can read on the graphic on the right. And on the left, we can see a Ukrainian ATO member who is guarded by the spirits of his warlike ancestors. On the left, we can see, I think, is the, uh, is the warrior from the time of Kiev Rus. Uh, here is the UPA partisan, and in the middle, uh, Kozak. This kind of graphics create something like family of Ukrainian warriors who share the same love for the country and mission of defending it. On the left is a picture posted on the web page of the U uh, Ukrainian Institute of National Remembrance, illustrating the text about the need to create uh, something like a new pantheon of Ukrainian heroes. Uh, this need to create new myth of Ukrainian army became uh, especially urgent uh, in the time of conflict with Russia. Russia uh, still strongly exploring the myth of the Great Patriotic War, and so that this hero from the past, soldier of Red Army, cannot be longer a symbol of Ukrainian army. During the celebration of Independence Day in 2014, Poroshenko emphasized this, uh, that we will honor the defenders of our fatherland day, uh, of our fatherland, not, not those of a foreign country. That's why, as we heard yesterday, uh, this, this soviet rooted holiday, Defender of the Fatherland Day from February, was cancelled and replaced by Defender of Ukraine Day. Uh, the new holiday uh, is celebrated on October 14. It's a Krova holiday, but at the same time, it's the day of Ukrainian Cossacks and <coughs> symbolic day of the establishment of the Ukrainian insurgent army. And in this way, Cossacks became uh, one of the official symbols of a new Ukrainian army. On this poster, you can see the same face of the Ukrainian defender, but in different historical times. In this poster, it's created by Andriy Yermolenko to commemorate the new holiday. So we can see these three figures, Kozak, UPA soldier, and member of ATO, uh, who they are connected by a mission to defend their family land against the enemy from the east. In a large part of representations, we have seen the Cossack is portrayed as a symbol of masculinity, understood in a very traditional way. So as a physically strong man, indicated by white shoulders, naked torso, very often, and the Satian posture, like on these pictures created by Molenko and Yugi Jurabel. Uh, Here also we can see Cossack as a strong guardian of the family and the, and the family land. Next to strength, the most important masculine value that Cossack represents is courage. So the strong Cossack is afraid of nothing, the, the death doesn't exist because the nation is alive, and here, where courage, there is happiness. And here on this picture, I don't know if you've seen, but it's a Cossack against the background of symbols of battalions fighting in Donbass. And inscriptions suggest that being a Cossack is naturally associated with being a warrior. In the, so in the face of conflict, a real man has no choice but to show strength and courage and, and, and go to war. 
Uh, finally, it's worth mentioning that we can find contemporary Cossacks not only on posters and, and graphics, but also in real life. Uh, several of them, participants of the Revolution of Dignity and the anti-terrorist operation, became, uh, obtained such an iconic status, become, uh, becoming living representations. One of them is Mikhail Havriliuk, who participated in your Maidan, and I, I know you, I'm sure that you know his history. He was severely beaten by, by good officers, and uh, one of the officers put the video of this event on YouTube, and it gained great popularity. Havel became famous, he became one of the heroes of the Revolution of Dignity and even the People's Deputy of Ukraine. Here we can read uh, fragments of interview with him and the mobiliz mobilization message is really strong, uh, really strong here. After the Revolution of Dignity, he became a member of Volunteer Battalion of Zoloty Vorota. Here we can see a reputation poster with him. And here another another fragment uh, of interview. So uh, anyone who is able to move, who is able to walk, should stand and stand up and protect uh, Ukraine. The second icon is Vasil Slipak, uh, who was who, who who was an opera singer who made a career at the Paris Opera. Uh, during the Revolution of Dignity, he discovered himself as Ukrainian patriot. Uh, he became deeply involved in patriotic activities. He joined the volunteer battalion of Gravi Sector, uh, and he died, uh, he was killed by a sniper shot in June 2016. Two years later, a movie about Slipak was made, and it's a... Uh, it's part of a documentary movie, part of animation made by Yuri Vlogavel, and it's really a heroic story about contemporary Cossack who could have been different to the, to the fate of the state and return back uh, to protect uh, their land. Uh, Myth was his, uh, his uh, military nickname uh, in reference to the Mephistopheles, which was his favorite role, but his uh, unofficial nickname was Myth because he became a, a, a real myth. And the last example is much more local and familiar, showing the vitality of this Cossack identity among Ukrainians. Uh, these pictures were, were like posters. People also shared them in the, in the social media profiles. I found uh, it on the profiles of, of my Facebook friends. Uh, both heroes died during fighting this war, during, during this war, and as we can read in articles devoted to them, they were really contemporary Cossacks inspired by Mama's spirit uh, to join the, the battalions. And in turn, they, they can serve as examples for, for, for others. <laughs>